Hello everyone, today we will look at 4 main reasons why your renders are not looking realistic. Make sure to stay around until the end of the video to make your renders as professional as possible in Enscape. Whenever you're starting off a project, the first thing you want to take off the box is the composition of the shots you want to take. The aspect ratio and the resolution of the image mainly depends on what platform you would be using your image on. If you're going to be using it for computer screens or thumbnails, I would suggest you to use an aspect ratio of 16 by 9. If the picture is going to be showcased in social media, I like to use the aspect ratio of 4x5 or a 1080 x 1350 resolution since it kind of fills up a good portion of the viewer's screen if they're scrolling through Instagram or LinkedIn. Field of view is one of the settings in this category as well. Naturally, our eyes have a field of view of 50 to 60 degrees, but that doesn't mean that we have to always follow that. Interior images sometimes are usually taken with a wider field of view, especially when they're specialized for real estate marketing in order to capture more of the space than usual and just to make the illusion of the space to look bigger. You have to be careful with this since you don't want the field of view to go to extreme highs or lows since it will distort the image. Make sure to play around with the settings in every render since different images will need different field of views. Perspective is another key component in getting the best composition for your images. There's different types of perspectives in every rendering engine. Usually the ones I use the most are the two-point perspective and the three-point perspective. If your images are being taken from eye level, I would suggest to use the two-point perspective. The reason behind that is that it will make all vertical lines 90 degrees and in the same angle. Otherwise, vertical lines that are set to the side of the image will be distorted. We naturally see in three-point perspective but two-point perspective brings out the qualities of most buildings and that's what is used most of the time for architecture images, with one exception. If you're taking aerial renders, two-point perspective will look very distorted and very weird, therefore three-point perspective is the right option to use here. If you want to learn more about composition, I would suggest you to check out the sponsor of the video, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills. I myself joined Skillshare because I am looking more into photography and composition where I am taking the frame a great shot exploring photo composition course by Porter Yates. I believe the course will improve my presentation skills and my composition in renders since a lot of the tips are applicable in the art quiz world as well. It is also a great place to improve other areas like illustration, graphic design, freelancing and any other type of creative outlet that you think can complement architecture. Skillshare is ad free so you won't have any distractions while you're exploring new skills. There are new premium classes launched each week so there's always something new to discover and the entire catalog is available with subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese and German. The first 1000 people to use the link in the description box will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So let's get back to the video. Lighting is what most people struggle with. And to be honest, it might be the hardest part of the rendering to get right. So to enhance our interior scenes, we can improve our scenes with two different types of lighting, natural lighting and artificial lighting. So let's start off with natural lighting. So most of the time your interior scene will have windows or some kind of opening through which natural lighting will come through. One of the ways we can play around with this lighting is through the sun intensity slider. In my opinion, the Enscape sun creates very harsh shadows, therefore I prefer to leave it at 2 or 3% for interior scenes if I'm using one at all. I usually don't use default Enscape sun, but instead I replace it with artificial lighting. One thing you have to understand when creating renders is that you should be free to use lighting even where it doesn't naturally belong. So I usually put spotlights outside to create better lighting, but for this scene I will put a row of rectangular lighting which will act as outdoor lighting and will come from the windows. To complement this, in this scene we will add sphere lights on the outside part of the windows to make the area behind the curtains brighter. Other than this, we will add lighting in the usual spaces of the scene where it belongs, like in the recessed lighting from the top or near lamps or anything else that your scene contains similar to this. Now that you have set your composition and lighting, it is time to look at the materials. When choosing the materials, there are a couple boxes you should tick other than combining the color palette. 
The first thing you should be looking out for is the material to be seamless. This means that the material itself repeats without any breaks and it just means that you cannot tell when the material tile is repeating. If your material is seamless, you have to also make sure that the image is high quality and that the resolution is appropriate. Now that you have uploaded material which has high resolution and is seamless, let's take a look at the other parameters that you have to keep an eye out for. The main mistake I see people make is that their materials do not reflect enough. Remember that almost every single material has reflections and especially in interiors. I think if you add reflections almost everywhere like walls, flooring, tables, uh, you'll be able to tell the difference immediately. The whole area just comes to life and the lighting distribution is a lot more natural. If you don't want to go through the effort of modifying the materials, you can always download PBR materials or you can choose them from the Enscape material library as well. As of now, the library offers almost 400 materials, but it keeps updating pretty often and the materials are, themselves are high quality. If your 3D models are not realistic, all the other aspects of your rendering will fall apart. Enscape offers a good amount of assets you can use for their library and most of them do look quite realistic, especially the ones that have been uploaded recently. But if the Enscape asset library is not enough and you're using SketchUp as a modeling software like I am, the SketchUp warehouse is a good place to get your models. But obviously there are some 3D models that are straight up trash. I'm going to show you how to categorize and find the best models to use in your projects. To demonstrate this to you, I'm going to click on the SketchUp Warehouse and search up Sofa without any filtering. In the 3D Warehouse, you can find a few categories like products, models, collections, catalogs, etc. In the Products section, you can usually find official 3D models from furniture brands and 9 times out of 10 you're going to find better models in this section than in the Models section. But if the Products section doesn't offer a good variety of 3D models or you just can't find exactly what you're looking for, we will move on to the model section. In the model section, you can find good models, bad models, awful models and everything in between, but our goal is to find the best ones. To filter out all the bad modelings, we're going to change the number of polygons of the models. Obviously the number of polygons isn't an immediate indicator of the quality, but it definitely means that most of the time the furniture is more detailed. As you can see now that the sofas that are showing up are higher quality than before. I'll also make a video soon about other sources of 3D models that you can find online. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for that. Alright, so thank you very much for watching the video all the way to the end. Hope you enjoyed and if you did, click the like button, subscribe to the channel and make sure to check out my Patreon to find all the 3D models of the scenes that I use in the YouTube channel. See you in the next one.